All right, here we are. We are on location in the United Kingdom. Of course, as everybody knows, we are on tour. We're doing these shows in front of a live audience. Um, you can't hear them. They are cheering their heads off. It's crazy. Um, but this is a directional mic, very good one. So it's not picking up, you know, any of that sound. Um, Definitely not Philadelphia. So yes, that's we have been. Why did you grab? <laughs> he was. He went back somewhere and has a stack of something. And now we're going to have to... All right. So, yeah, but we are on location. It's a, it's a beautiful area, beautiful place. You know, it's a little dour. The, the food sucks, but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We are now, today, going to talk about a movie we just watched. It is The Graduate, the 19... <laughs> the 19... 98. The 1998 <laughs> movie, The Graduate, w- with Dustin Hoffman. Hello, darkness, my old friend. What are you going to do now? I was going to go upstairs for a minute. Oh, I meant with your future, your life. Left it seems while I was sleeping. And Van Wilder. And Van Wilder. So this movie, of course, we just watched it. It has some of the best music. Yeah, it's from all Metallica. All. <laughs> It has uh, some of the best music, all Metallica. You wouldn't think it fits the subject matter because it's about the coming of age. You know, it's about the malaise that you get after college uh, in that era with just not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. Um, In that area of 1998, (laughs) people didn't really know what they should be doing with their lives. We're in that portion after World War II and III. The Korean War and and the other one. We're in that portion after that where people just don't really know how to find meaning in what they do. And it's right before Star Wars Episode One comes out. So mm-hmm. that's not going to help. It has only begun, son. Yeah. Yeah, so The Graduate. You're Dustin Hoffman, you know, great actor, classic actor. What did you think about The Graduate? Um, I thought it was... Odd that they had him be developmentally impaired. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> For the yeah. whole movie. But it made the romance a lot more believable. Because <laughs> Van Wilder's an idiot. <laughs> you know, I thought <laughs> that the developmental impairments, it kind of undermined the morality of the <laughs> of Van Wilder running a train on <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. I feel like... That was just a little too much for them to do. Like, I understand it's like a gross-out sex comedy. Yeah, obviously. But I just... It doesn't seem like it was appropriate. You know, this is Mm -hmm. one of the few times where I feel like they went overboard. There you go. Program. Mr. Wilder, are you trying to seduce me? No. (laughs) Well, yeah. You know. But in the end, you don't even know really who was there. Because all of them were wearing... Thomas the Tank Engine masks while they <laughs> ran the That's true. That is true. The Thomas the so Tank Engine mask. Could have just been Van Wilder over and over and they're just exploring their kinks. Yeah, they could have used that split screen thing <laughs> where it was just him going in each time. Um, and it was an homage to Eyes Wide Shut. Yes. So that yeah. there was a brilliant kind of way to work that in. Um, it was really cool that Dustin Hoffman counted them all though. He's like 246. 246 total. Good change. They're 246. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that took a while, but it was, uh, <laughs> like I said, I think that scene was a little overboard, <laughs> but it, it was so long. <laughs> it, it did have, uh, there was a heart to it, you yeah. know, that you didn't really expect to come out of it. When Dustin Hoffman uh, exited that bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and said ten minutes to wafter. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you felt that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You, you felt that because Adorable they wheelchair. they all made. Sh- <laughs> he couldn't walk out of two hundred forty six. <laughs> no one can. But they all made sure to finish before his show came on. Yeah, you know. Of so yeah. it was it was very thoughtful of them, even though there are two hundred forty six of them. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, the, there are so many things about this. You know, it's classic, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dustin Hoffman, um, Charlie Theron, 
Yep. Oh, was one of the 246. Uh, <laughs> they, Obviously. They, uh, <laughs> she just kept saying her name over and over. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? She didn't have a whole lot of lines. Yeah, but was she wasn't just... even supposed to be playing herself. She had a name tag <laughs> that said Joseph on it. <laughs> she just kept yelling out, Charlie staring. It was kind of hard to believe she was really Joseph in that movie. It did. It struggled, but I think that was it. Was part of his disability is yeah. that he thought that he was Charlize Theron. So I think she was going for something pretty sense. complex there. Yeah, uh, yeah, like like a monster vibe, but like different kind of monster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Charlize Theron, yeah, and her tiny Teddy. She she did nail the part, um, even though she didn't have a lot of a uh, lot of things to say. Dustin Hoffman was great. Tom Cruise shows up again. I think he's been in every movie. (laughs) Every one that we've done so far. He's been in at least one movie. He had to be the hype man for when they sent all of them up with Bruce Willis up to that asteroid to try and destroy it before it destroyed Earth. Yeah, that was the nickname that they gave to Dustin Hoffman's ass. was the asteroid. (laughs) We gotta send you all. (laughs) We gotta drill. (laughs) Yeah. Ving Rhames guest starring as the white horse. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Rames, yeah. Steve Buscemi. Uh, Steven and Tyler. Steven Tyler, Ben Affleck, Liv Tyler. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were a lot of big names in this. That wasn't the only thing big about him. About which one? All of them. Liv egos. Tyler no, and their pepperoni are... nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those were pretty big. Uh, <laughs> Pepperoni <laughs> I mean, not that you're wrong. <laughs> Did anything else happen in the movie? Or was it just two hours of, <laughs> of the line? <laughs> it was that the whole time. Except for at the very end. When he's in the back of the bus and he looks like he might be a little bit sad about his decision. <laughs> I like that he's just a little bit sad. <laughs> so I'm going to have a second thought about that. <laughs> like, maybe I should do something else next time. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it was a very... I'm trying to avoid the, the phrase coming of age. <laughs> but it, it, was, uh, it was an important 1998 movie. Um, you know, it's definitely worth the watch. It, just for the music alone, it's worth watching. Yeah. I can't remember anything. Yeah, it kicked off so many greats like um, American Pie and Road Trip were all like built off of this exact platform. For sure. It was a direct line. Van Wilder uh, took us straight there. So yeah, good movie. Um, I'm going to give it four pairs of glasses out of 16 trench coats. And I'm going to give it the sound of silence. The sound of silence. Yeah, that's uh, that's a hell of a score on that one. Still, It still hasn't reached the Friends level score. but No, it's getting up there though. It's good. That was good. Okay, so that was The Graduate. What was the, what was the other one that we watched? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so we watched... Yeah, I remember it, clearly. I remember every detail about this movie. Uh, Baraka. <laughs> Baraka, the movie. Baraka. It's about mountains and <laughs> and uh, culture in general. Is that is that a solar eclipse? Is that what we're looking at? It's about culture for yep. sure. Culture and mountains. You definitely watch this documentary with no words, start to finish, right? <laughs> Yeah, we watched it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Baraka. Uh, so something that we grew up with was was Baraka. You know, yeah. he had the 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 things on his fists, the and slicey swords. things. Yep. Yeah, the swords on his fists. Um, he sliced people up. Of course, he had to do all this with no words. So we didn't really know his motivation throughout most of the movie when well, he was slicing mountains and things. But well, it really helped to have him though. Because he cut short that 15 minute scene of somebody just doing the helicopter dick. <laughs> and thankfully he came through with the sword arm. I thought that that was actually really an inspiring performance at that time. The helicopter dick. Just go 15 minutes straight with it? But he, really he was taking off. Like yeah. he was leaving the ground. Yeah. And obviously it, was, it must have been uh, Baraka's jealousy mm-hmm. uh, you know, at that moment. Because he can't helicopter dick off the ground. So he, that's why he had to attack him. Yeah, of course. Um, and I see what you mean. You know, it did seem like 15 minutes straight of it was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, and that's, of course, we felt that when Baraka was feeling that. 
and had to end it uh, so abruptly. But uh, like I said, I, I feel like it was an inspiring moment and something that could inspire the next astronaut, you know, who's mm. trying to go to the moon or trying to helicopter <laughs> Dick. <laughs> I mean, it would have been an inspiration, but we didn't get that because Baraka had to step in. And maybe that's kind of the, the, the gravitas of the story. It was trying to give you that Icarus lesson. He was flying too close to the sun. It might have been. Might and have been. Baraka burned him for it. Uh, yeah, it's it's a reference to mythology. It could be. And that's why we have uh, the solar eclipse here. It's mm-hmm. saying, you know, the solar eclipse is trying to protect you. It's trying to block from, you from the sun. Yeah, yeah, from getting up to the sun. And mm-hmm. so was Baraka. So yep. Baraka, it makes sense now that he was a spherical object. <laughs> <laughs> that, that he was representative of the moon that was blocking the sun. That's why he mm-hmm. was a sphere. Yeah. So, which made the other scene where he actually mooned the sun a lot more symbolic. <laughs> right. It was, it was more symbolic than literal uh, when he had to moon the sun as the moon. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's definitely true. But it says so much. Yeah. You know? it, well, and there were so many stars in this movie too. It was kind of ridiculous. There's um, Cassiopeia. Yep. Woody from Toy Story. Woody from Toy Story. (laughs) (laughs) There was Orion's Belt. There was the Big Dipper. Yep. And by that, I mean uh, Ron Perlman. Mm, James Vanderbeek. James Vanderbeek. And so, uh, yeah, I thought the that Woody and James Vanderbeek, they actually, they were really interesting. Obviously, the first half, the whole movie, you have no words. Nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know. Uh, first half was Baraka doing his thing and uh, chopping up the helicopter dick guy. Second half was James Vanderbeek and Woody on an exploratory journey under the water. Yeah. So uh, we get the both, we get the mountains, we get the top, and we get under the water. And we get how seriously they take it when James Vanderbeek pulls Woody's string and nothing comes out. That was huge. That was a big moment. Um, because all the rest of the time, he pulled the string and nothing came out. Mm. So when he did it at the end and he pulled the string and nothing came out, it was huge. Yeah, we were just like, wow. Yeah, I mean, it was poignant. Like, it was like that Schindler's List moment. Yeah, the Schindler's List moment. When, when he was writing the list. When he was writing out the actual list. Yeah, you're like, whoa. It was this a lot like, the title like of the movie. it was a lot like that when he would say you know like uh, bacon and milk and he was writing those things out. Those were the nicknames for the Jews. He was gonna kill. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much more offensive. He called one bacon. <laughs> it's amazing, but he didn't even kill the Jews. He was saying. Never mind. We haven't done Schindler's List yet, so maybe that is what happens. <laughs> that Schindler's actually making a kill list and naming them stupid names. <laughs> hey, Bacon! Bacon, get over here! <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, it was like Schindler's List in that way. I thought the choice to not have any words was kind of uh, a dick-ass move. They um, can only communicate through sign language and literal screaming. <laughs> yeah, actual screaming and sign language, meaning they would write on a sign what they mm-hmm. were trying to say. No, um, but it was all just like foul language. <laughs> yeah, but it was only an Ithkill too. So yeah. you had to be able to speak Ithkill mm-hmm. to be able to understand what they were saying. And we tried to translate, but we saw it in theaters, so we couldn't, you know, do, uh, we couldn't take pictures of it. I mean, we took pictures of it, but we couldn't take pictures of everything that was being said, you know. So- so we just took pictures of our favorite parts. And it just so happens all of that was a helicopter dick scene. And yeah, there was no yeah. ones the whole time. We filled our phones <laughs> with helicopter dick footage. And we just did not have enough room for anything else. But I think it probably would have been something, you know, really important to the movie. That would have changed the way that you really looked at it if we could have known uh, what they were saying to each other. But it was still, it was still big. It was still impactful. Uh, you know, it reminded me of of Tarkovsky. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Solaris. Yep. Yeah. So it reminded me a lot of that actually, and the way that it it was structured, and the way that I didn't understand the Russian in Tarkovsky. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what they were saying. So um, it was a lot like that. Too. Yeah, they didn't have any words in that either. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> there were words. There were Russian things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, that was Baraka. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Baraka, it was, it was pretty, it was important, it was poignant. 
I give it the both of the nipples of the monster that is in Liv Tyler. <laughs> No, I'm not a fan of those nipples. <laughs> no, uh, that Luke drank out of in Star Wars. Yeah, Tauntauns? No, oh, he climbed in, in one. the new one. In oh, the, in the second know. one, where the, he squeezes the milk out of those those monster things. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to watch it more now, though. <laughs> oh, all right. So I, I give, yeah, I give it uh, two of those nipples. Not any more than that, though. Uh, but two is good. It's really good. It's nice. two out of three. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm going to give it a nice dinner. A nice dinner? <laughs> just, yeah. all right, just a general nice dinner? Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so um, what's next? So, yeah, we, we watched... It's funny you say we, we. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, earlier today, you know, obviously right before we, we got on, we actually watched Ratatouille. <laughs> you know, the Disney Pixar joint... It has some wonderful people. It's got the the comedian from Watchmen, Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul, yeah, the who's in Watchmen, yeah. Uh, so he's he's actually the lead. He plays the rat, but he's it's actually Liam Neeson in Rat Ears. Mm. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So so that was good. Uh, so what happened in what happened in Ratatouille? Well, at first I thought it was going to be like a whole movie about soup, but mm. I realized that in French, Ratatouille actually means rat tattooing. And <laughs> so Liam Neeson had a tattoo partner where he would take what people wanted to have tattooed and he would twisted metal style ruin it for him. So oh, so was, whenever they asked for something, he would do something yeah. that was just a messed up version of that. Oh, yeah. Based on their words. Yeah, that's an interesting choice for Disney. Uh, to have a, a rat tattoo artist for the basis of one of their major releases. So I remember, yeah, when I first watched this, I, I didn't expect that. But I really feel like this movie is really overrated. You know, a lot of people put it on kind of top lists when it comes to Pixar movies. But I thought that, you know, the animation wasn't all that special or spectacular. I thought the character character writing was actually pretty terrible. And a lot of the plotting was really underdone, and yeah. they just didn't do it very well. Was um, it out of place when it started raining meatballs? When it was raining meatballs, yeah, that was out of place. When the one kid, you know, the kid that they use, um, so the rat, If for people who don't know the story, the rat climbs in the kid's hat, you know. It's an Ed Hardy hat. Yeah, the Ed Hardy hat. He climbs in the Ed Hardy hat, and he actually makes the kid move by grabbing his hair and makes the kid do the things, you know, he's tattooing people. And all that sort of thing. So I, I just think that they relied too much on that. And that kind of undermined the motivations of the kid himself. And which was to find that gun that he lost. Which was to find the gun. Yeah. So uh, if they would have maintained that motivation rather than making him turn into a tattoo artist. Or like an air sats tattoo artist. I feel like it would have been a more interesting story. And then, you know, when the, the one girl, uh, Mike Tyson... Mm-hmm. When when she became the villain in the story, um, I think it picked up a lot mm-hmm. because it, they do the face tattoo and it's not quite right because it's like really ornate and all this stuff. And he's like, I want a dick. And so there, you know, there's a, the conflict there. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, wanted a dick and he was made to look like a dick. And that was the twist on this tattoo for him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when we're going through this, I think that the choice of um, Raz Al Ghul for the for the rat <laughs> was kind of, and doing it live action, but only for Liam Neeson. <laughs> I thought that was that was not a good choice. Uh, it just didn't make sense that a full size Liam Neeson can stand on the head of a kid under a hat and and be able to direct him with the hair. Well, the thing is that it wouldn't have worked all live action for that very reason. They went through so many actors that Liam Neeson stood on. He killed seven <laughs> children. Yeah, so it just didn't didn't line up. Um, great hot air balloon chase scene, but it was happening in the background of the actual movie, so we don't know really what happened with it. But it looked like it was pretty cool. Right, I it was for another that, movie. Yeah, we yeah. hope we see that in another movie sometime. <laughs> 
So, yeah, they were doing something in the foreground um, yeah. while this hot air chase scene was in the background. And, uh, you know, it was like Bruce Willis and Tom Cruise were chasing each other in mm-hmm. the hot air balloons. Um, but we didn't get to see what happened with that. Th- there was some good action. There was uh, there were some good action beats. Like when, when they get into that UFC match and, and Tom Hardy has his arm broken. I by feel, Ed Hardy. By Ed Hardy, yeah. <laughs> and then when... Over his other hat. <laughs> And and when the um you know the other animals rise up because they're like because there's this conflict because the one kid doesn't want to be stepped on by Liam Neeson rat anymore, so when the other animals rise up and the frogs come in and the frogs start doing the frog splashes onto the people that makes sense yeah I mm-hmm. thought that that was actually a nice a nice addition it was a nice twist yeah so so um, that part was good directed by Christopher Columbus Christopher Columbus. Columbus. All of the anti-Native American hate that he put in this movie. There, you know, I was trying that to was ignore a little bit it. Distracting. I was trying to ignore it. Yeah, all all that stuff about the Native Americans being savages and sacrificing children and being drunks and and gambling a lot and all that. I mean, it's all on the Wikipedia page. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, I verified uh, that that's all accurate. Yeah, just look up Christopher Columbus, real history, and then you'll be just as disgusted as we are. I meant about the Indians. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You look that stuff up. It's all accurate. They're all those things. Um, But but I still think it was it was insensitive, you Mm. know, to put it in a movie like this, especially one by Pixar. A lot of children are going to see this, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's good lessons for him. Yeah, some good lessons like don't stand under Liam Neeson when he's pretending to be a rat. Well, and check under your tattoo artist's hat. To make sure you're going to get what you're actually asking right, for. Right, right. Yeah, so those and are important lessons. don't trust them if they're bald. I don't... Wait, wouldn't that help, though? If they're bald, they can't be directed by a rat under the hat. Yeah, but you just can't trust a bald person in general. That, again, I checked the Wikipedia page. That was true, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. But yeah, so uh, overall, uh, like I said, it's overrated generally. I like the frog splashing. I liked the, the parts with Mike Tyson were good. Uh, but other than that, you know, there were a lot of things that that just, I don't know, left me kind of hollow. You know, I wanted a little more out of them, out of the storytelling. Uh, yeah. Anything else to say about Ratatouille? Mm, nah. No? Have you ever tried it? To tattoo? Yeah, to tattoo In somebody. French? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever tried that? Yes. Uh, did it go well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was uh, pretty good. No, that's good. So I'll do... My score is going to be 47 Ronin out of John Wick 2, I think is what it's going to be. Yeah. Nice. I think that's uh, that's probably the right score for this one. That makes sense. Yeah. So what do you give it? Both of them Tom Holland movies. I like those. You give it both of them Tom Holland movies? No. Do you like those? No, I like I think that's a good score. That's a reasonable score for this. My score is actually going to be a VHS copy of Dragon the Bruce Lee story. That high? Yeah. Wow, you really like this. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But, uh, I mean, if that's how you saw it, that's how you saw it. Okay. Okay, I guess we'll have to accept that. We have to do another one. <laughs> hey! Yeah, we watched this one. So this one, Rushmore, for people who haven't seen it. All these legends, there is one that stands above all others. That little guy. He's one of the worst students we've got. It's got Chris Tucker. Jackie Chris Tucker, Chan. Jackie Chan. Uh, it's about the mountain. Mm-hmm. Mount Rushmore. Rushmore uh, Hour. Rushmore Hour, yeah. So, obviously, anybody who hasn't seen it, it's... They are... There's this big traffic pileup of everybody trying to drive over Mount Rushmore. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's Rushmore Hour, Chris Tucker, Jackie Chan, uh, and they have to find criminals just within this... This traffic issue, you know? Yep. And uh, luckily they have our star of the movie, Jason Statham, as the yeah. overachieving... What's the secret, Max? The secret? High schooler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that wants to come up with all sorts of clever ideas to help catch all these people. And it's great, yeah, because he he actually has a flaw too. Because he doesn't get very good grades, but his extracurriculars off the charts, um, including like his kicking and things mm. like that. Just amazing. Yeah, well, and he also has the go-kart, so he can go in between the cars so much yeah. easier yeah. than Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Yeah, they, yeah. They just scream at each other for most of the movie. Yeah, they're, well, they're Statham minorities. Transporting so. in between all the cars very easily. Right, 
So, uh, yeah, Jason Statham gets to do that. And he falls in love with his teacher, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that's a big part of the story. Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello! Ah! Falls in love with Mrs. Doubtfire. This is a reanimated Robin Williams who's playing this. Of course, I thought it was uh, it was a really bold choice to reanimate him with electrodes um, well, to play this character. By reanimate, you mean because he was animated as a genius in the labyrinth? Exactly. <laughs> animated him again. In the labyrinth, yeah. <laughs> Good job. He's a, he's a genie again. In the labyrinth. Yeah. In this movie. So that's how they animated it, was with the electrodes. Uh, yep. To make him into the blue genie Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that's the one that Jason Statham falls in love with. And they have they have a really contentious thing at first because she's trying to maintain her professionism, professionalism um, and, and clean his house. And the um, dating actually the doctor, um, Patch Adams. Was? was <laughs> <laughs> Remember the dinner scene? Oh, the dinner scene. with Yeah, uh, yeah so it's, it's the genie in the... Um, with Luke Combs. With Luke Combs, the <laughs> singer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay. Luke comes in his OR scrubs. Nurse's uniform guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? <laughs> so, so Luke comes in the OR scrubs, you know, obviously best friend of Mrs. Doubtfire. Yep. Um, so he's trying to help Serenade, you know, he's singing, and trying to get Jason Statham and them to fall in love. But there's the whole issue of of the Dr. Patch Adams, you know, getting in the way. Yep, um, of course. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of background affection between them. You know, mm-hmm. they've had a history. So so there's that whole thing. But where the hell are Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan? <laughs> They're stuck in traffic. Dude. They're still in traffic? <laughs> yeah, the whole time. It's time, homie. Kiss me, little one. But everybody's in traffic, so the dinner scene happens <laughs> in the car. <laughs> when the when they uh they're in an RV. Yeah, in so an RV. There's a dining table in the back. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. um, it's a nice scene. It's Can't a really well it. done scene. Because it's Wes Anderson. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it looks beautiful. Uh, it's well shot. It's well acted. It's great pace. Lots of humor. Um, a lot of really good things about that scene. But I thought it was really bold to to do the whole thing in a traffic jam on Mount Rushmore. Max Fisher. Come on, Dad. There's going to be girls there. I'd rather die. Pull your head out of your... Mm-hmm. Um, well, mostly because they don't allow cars on the mountain normally. Yeah, so it, this was everybody running from uh, the War of the Worlds. Yeah. You know, when Tom Cruise <laughs> Tom Cruise, and Dakota Fanning had the weasels attack. Had the weasels <laughs> attack. <laughs> yeah. So the, there was that giant weasel attack. They had hid. All the... the kaijus in the ground and mm-hmm. the weasels came from the sky they not from space they were just like a couple stories <laughs> up <laughs> all were jumping off of buildings <laughs> into the, into the thing. Uh, but yeah so when they showed up and they uh they attacked tom cruise i think it was chicago or something you know they attacked there and his son is immediately eaten by one of the weasels mm-hmm. so you know this is something that's very difficult for him to live with except for the fact that his son was really fucking annoying and I hated him, and I'm so glad he's dead. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than that... Caitlin Orson Wells tried to warn us about this attack, too. Caitlin Orson Wells, <laughs> yeah. They they tried, you know, I remember the all the news stories about mm-hmm. him talking about how weasels were going to jump from second-story buildings and, <laughs> and try to attack our cities. You know, it didn't, it didn't take, you know, we still didn't listen. We should have listened. Yeah. Yeah. So... Are we talking about Rush War? <laughs> what we t- Rush, why Rush why did we get to War of the Worlds? <laughs> oh, all the people were running from. That's why they were driving on the mountain. They are running from weasels, and that's why they ended up on the mountain. Yeah, that's true. So how did this movie end? What happened at the end of this movie? Um, that's the one where like the fog came in and killed everybody and made the dude kill his own kid. And then the military came to save him right before he could kill himself. And it was uh, it was based on a Jane Austen book, and uh, I thought it was weird. It didn't fit. It didn't fit. It didn't fit for them to mash those two movies there at the end. You no, know? no. Uh, because I mean, everything else was perfectly fine just before that moment, 
But yeah. then that moment came and we're like, you know what? This doesn't seem like it fits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like a lot of the um, the cinematography. You know, a lot of the effects and stuff were actually mm-hmm. really cool. And the setup was great. I like how often they broke the fourth wall and just talked to us as an audience throughout the whole movie. Are you no? Well, I thought that they were. They just counted four walls and would break the fourth one. <laughs> uh, wasn't that what they were doing? They did that too. <laughs> okay, maybe that was symbolic. Mm, they, you know, I which thought was I took really it literally weird from their but, cars and the traffic jam to be breaking walls, but they still did it. The, yeah, they were because they had to put the walls up first. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so, yeah it took a little extra highway. Effort. Throw up a wall. Well, you got to throw up four of them. Yeah, so throw up break, four and then break, break the, the fourth, fourth one. one. Yeah, <laughs> leave up the other three. But so I thought the performances, Dakota Fanning was good, Tom Jane was good. Uh, you know, I thought he, he's not a great actor or anything, but he did fine. Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan, <laughs> I know they just, they were in one car the whole time. Still, they they put in their performances, you know, as well as they're going Honestly, through. I couldn't understand a word that was coming out of their mouths. No, neither of them. <laughs> neither uh, of them. Yeah, well, that's probably because... Uh, Thick Louisiana was, accents. The, yeah, there's that. <laughs> But also he was speaking Chinese, you know, Chris Tucker. Yeah. So he's speaking Chinese the whole time. So, mm-hmm. um, and there were no subtitles, so that made it more difficult. But yeah, it was, it was something, it was something, some kind of a movie. Wes Anderson is a great director. I always support him, but I didn't buy when Jason Statham was banging Jeannie. What's Constantly. <laughs> Wait, what? Cause it was Patch Adams and. Let's see the other one. Oh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, Mrs. So, Doubtfire yeah, Genie. yeah. Genie and Mrs. Doubtfire and Jason Satham when they were having their lovemaking scene, mm-hmm. you know, in the uh, in the bed of a Ford truck F one fifty. At least it was in a bed this time. Yeah, yeah. They had added a bed to the back of the truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and they had the headboard and everything. But um, when they were doing that, I just. I thought it was a little gratuitous at that point. Mm. You know, you didn't need the the strictly asshole shots. Yeah, it was like just close up the whole time. Yeah, that was too much. It wasn't it was even showing much. the penetration. It was nope. just a close up on Nothing. the asshole. There was not even any moving. It <laughs> yeah. was just it's just static <laughs> people <laughs> showing assholes back and forth, each asshole. And I just don't think that that's necessary or that it actually. I understand the choice though, because like. Between all the different angles that they would show, asshole, asshole, asshole. They had this yeah. still shot of Kid Rock right in the middle of it. So it was showing all the different ways you can show an asshole on screen. Oh, was that what it was about? Yeah. I don't think you noticed the difference between the pictures. But it was really subtle because one of the assholes had a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> that was Mrs. Doubtfires. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Okay. I mean, there's some kind of thematic going on there that I think I missed. It's good... That you had the, <laughs> had the vision and the wherewithal. I was wearing 3D glasses the whole time. That's how I saw it. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, that was that was Rushmore. You know, I give it I give it one inappropriate teacher out of three. Nice. I think. Yeah. Nice. I'll give it a um, a nice pair of Allen Iverson's shoes. Just so not necessarily the ones that were made for him. No, <laughs> just, any someone, shoes he happens to wear. The only yeah, pair so. he has left. He's <laughs> stuck in barefoot from now on. All right, yeah, uh, I can see that. There's some kind of middling reviews. Yeah, we. Oh, we did it. <laughs> we did it. So that was that. All right, do you want to see the last one that you avoided? Yeah, what was the last one? <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, it's good. We did thing. We could have gotten some stuff there. Uh, so that was. We did, what was this one? The Graduate. Graduate, Baraka, <laughs> Ratatouille, and Rushmore, all in one episode. Um, it was a good episode. We got a lot of stuff taken care of there. You know, there are a lot of complex themes to talk about in those. So do you want to say bye to the people? Uh-uh. Okay, so I will say bye, and we will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>